The top stories tonight in Y News. Suspended Bureau of Corrections Director General Gerald Bantag is among uh, around 160 persons of interest in the killing of veteran broadcaster Percy Lapid. A Korean Airlines plane overshoots the runway at the Maktan Cebu International Airport Sunday evening. British Conservative Rishi Sunak was poised to become Prime Minister and the country's first leader of color. And a research study has discovered that the main symptoms of the coronavirus may be changing. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, October 24, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News & Rescue social media channels. First in the news, Philippine National Police Chief General Rodolfo Azurin Jr. stated that the case of the killing of broadcaster Percy Lapid has not yet been resolved. That is why the PNP is still gathering more data that can help solve the crime. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. The mastermind and motive behind the killing of broadcaster Percy Lapid have yet to be determined by the Philippine National Police. That's why PNP Chief Police General Rodolfo Azurin Jr. said the case is not yet solved even though they identified the gunman and other cohorts and was able to file complaints against them. Hindi pa natin masasabi na, na, na solved although we have filed the case already initially uh, against kay, uh, Mr. Escorial and yung mga kasamahan niya because we have yet to determine na uh, saan ba nanggaling kung totoo na may, na may master, may saan ba nang galing yung, yung utos and uh, paano ho idinaan dun sa, sa dinibig na uh, is it between the mastermind and the middleman or meron pang dinaanan so yun yung mga tinitingnan natin na possibilities na uh, kailangan is uh, matumbok natin saan ba nang galing yung utos kung sinasabi natin na may nag-utos nga sin na istorya Azurin said they already have 160 persons of interest including the suspended Bureau of Corrections Chief Director General Gerald Bantag. 160 personalities na tinitingnan ninyo na batay doon sa huling mga broadcast ni Percy Lapid ay mga nabanatan niya. Kasi isa sa nabanatan niya ay si General Bantag ng Bucor. Kasama ho siya doon sa 160 personalities? Oo, oh, kasama siya. Uh, sino ho yung pinakamabigat doon 160 personalities? So nakikita ninyo na mayroong pinaka uh, matinding dahilan para ho mangyari yung prelim. Uh, Nire-record namin eh, uh, kasi tinitingnan namin yung ano. So tinatali pa namin kung sino yung pinakamaraming issue na yung halos uh, mayat maya ay dinabanatan ni ano. Or uh, mayat maya ay... Uh, issue na nilalabas ni Sir Percy hmm. Mabasa para nang sagal makita natin uh, sino ba yung ano, pinakamay issue na pwedeng magpagawa ng kaya. The PNP Top Cap also admits that he is not discounting the possibility of foul play in the death of alleged middleman Cristito Villamor pala now or June Villamor. Uh, most probably kasi nga sabi ko nga uh, it's too much of an uh, incident, diba? it's, it's an unfortunate incident, but it's a questionable. Following the preventive suspension of Director General Bantag, General Azrin believed that the PNP can now investigate well the killing of Villamor. With the suspension of General Bantag, uh, definitely, medyo mas, uh, mas magkakaroon ng leeway ang ating investigators to investigate yung mga iba't ibang mga uh, members ng Bureau of Corrections as well as yung mga inmates ni Mr. Villamor. Bantag was suspended last week following the death of Villamor inside the new Bilibid prison. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God.
The family of slain broadcaster Percy Lapid will file a complaint against suspended Bureau of Corrections or Bucor Director General Gerald Bantag. Dante Amento tells us why. The family of Percy Lapid said they may file a reckless imprudence resulting in murder complaint against the suspended Bureau of Corrections or Bucor Director General Gerald Bantag. Apparently due to Bantag's negligence, a mobile phone was used inside the new Belibid prison or NBP. It allowed communication to conduct Percy Lapid's killing. Walang imprudence sa kanya, walang cellphone na mangyari sa loob ng kulungan. At kung walang cellphone, walang pataya na nangyari. So it was through his recklessness that resulted in the death of Percy Lapid. Meanwhile, Justice Aguidari Crispin Rimulia said it is a right of the family. Well, that, that is the option of the family. Uh, yes, it is, it is the, in the, in, it, within their legal options. This morning, a preliminary investigation was carried out into the murder case involving the self-described gunman. Joel Escorial and his lawyer attended in person, but because they are still at large, three of the respondents cannot attend. Ang problema lang natin sa inakusahan, iisa lamang ang nandito na nakikita namin si Joel Escorial lang. So, in-expect namin na ipoformalize ni Joel Escorial kasama yung kanyang abogado si Atty. Alviar yung kanilang extrajudicial confession na kung saan inamin niya. The next preliminary investigation would take place on November 4, 2022. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The family of slain broadcaster Percy Lapid asked for a second autopsy on the remains of the alleged middleman in the killing case. Dante Amento tells us why. The family of slain broadcaster Percy Lapid is not satisfied with the result of the autopsy conducted by the National Bureau of Investigation or NBI. Hence, they ask for a second autopsy on the remains of the alleged middleman in the murder case, June Glova Villamor. Kasi pag mag-invalmation, alam na natin may chemical na nilalagay. Ang inahabol namin doon, hindi yung physical injuries na magkikita sa patay. Kung hindi, yung inadminister na posible na lason. Kasi tatingnan nyo ang balita, bigla lang namatay, di ba? Sabi may binangungot o ano. Based on the NBI's autopsy report, there was no external physical injury found on the body of Villamor. Justice Secretary Crispin Rimulia already asked forensic pathologist Dr. Raquel Fortun to conduct a re-autopsy on the remains in the Philippine General Hospital or PGH. This is also upon the request of the family of Percy Lapid. Uh, a validating autopsy uh, so that she can also give her uh, observations because uh, that is the agreement that I had with, uh, with Roy Mabasa who I spoke to yesterday. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa says former Philippine National Police Chief Camilo Cascolan is eligible as Undersecretary of the Department of Health. This after the DOH confirms his appointment to the said crucial government position. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. Different concerned groups and individuals protest against the appointment of former Philippine National Police Camilo Cascolan as the new Undersecretary of the Department of Health. The Alliance of Health Workers stated it is a huge insult to their sector who are most qualified to administer and run the affairs of the DOH. Senator Risa Ontiveros also expresses her appeal for an appointment of an official with qualification, expertise, and active in public health sector. Cascolan, however, defends managing health is not just about medical knowledge and that balancing science, management, and strategy is very important. He adds that his expertise on emergency response, his network, and experience play a great role in bringing health closer to the people. This is while the then former PNP chief also led the COVID-19 response of the country under the Duterte administration. Amid the disapprovals, Senator Ronald De La Rosa stood in favor of Cascolan. Hindi naman talaga kailangan doktor ka kung mag-manage ka ng isang uh, organization, di ba? Pagdating sa management, uh, hindi mo rin naman ma 
magkikwestiyon yung kanyang abilidad. A health expert meanwhile explained she was surprised but hopeful Cascolan's appointment may significantly contribute to the agency's processes. May dahilan para mailagay siya doon ni Presidente. So I'm thinking na makakatulong siya sa DOH in whatever means, no, in his personal capacity. The DOH is expected to confirm Cascolan's specific tasks in the agency in the coming days. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. A final show cause order is issued by the Land Transportation Office against the driver and the owner of the red Ferrari that was stopped on the EDSA busway. If the driver does not appear for the investigation, their driver's license may be revoked. J.P. Nunez tells us why. The owner of the red Ferrari, which was caught using EDSA busway, failed to attend the hearing set by the Land Transportation Office at 10 a.m. today. Today, hindi po siya nag, uh, nag-appear. Uh, Nakaalarman na po ang kanyang sasakyan at saka yung kanyang uh, license. Sa mga ganitong sitwasyon po, inaalarm po namin nang sa ganun po ang may-ari ng sasakyan, ang registered motor vehicle owner po is to compel to appear in our office and explain their side. The LTO issues final show cause order to foreign national who were assumed to be the driver of the luxury car. The next hearing and investigation was set on Wednesday, October 26 at 10 a.m. According to LTO's Intelligence and Investigation Division officer in charge, Renante Militante, if the owner of the vehicle fails to present himself or herself to the next hearing, they will resolve the case based on the available evidences they gathered. The owner of the vehicle may face administrative case related to disregarding traffic sign and revocation of his or her driver's license. Kung hindi po siya darating, uh, enough na po yun kasi we already gave him an opportunity to be heard. So, nakadalawang notice na po tayo sa kanya. And then we will resolve the case based on po sa mga ebidensya na naandito po sa Authorities reminded motorists that EDSA busway is an exclusive lane for public utility bus in the metro, government vehicle, and emergency vehicle. J.P. Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A total of 173 crew and passengers were on board the Korean air flight KE-631 from Incheon, South Korea that overshot the runway of Maktan Cebu International Airport last night. According to the authorities, all 162 passengers and 11 crew members were immediately evacuated and tended by airport emergency personnel. They added that no one got injured while it is said that MCIA operations were suspended, runway was closed for the safe removal of the aircraft. Earlier, MCIA authorities, in coordination with other agencies, said the runway was temporarily open between 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. They are targeting to resume the operations of the airport this midnight Tuesday, 12 a.m. Meanwhile, Korean Air apologized for the inconvenience caused by the incident. The company will be cooperating with local aviation and government authorities for the investigation. Bad weather condition is said to be the reason of the incident. The transport sector sets heightened alert status to ensure passenger safety this long holiday. J.P. Nunez tells us why live. Uh, yes, uh, JP, good evening. Go ahead. Yes, William, good evening. Earlier today, different agencies in transportation conducted a multi-sectoral meeting to ensure safety among those passengers who will be traveling to provinces this long holiday. Transportation agencies of the government Management of terminals, seaports, airports, railways, and expressways expect influx of passengers and motorists this coming long weekend. According to them, this is expected as the COVID-19 health restrictions for traveling have been relaxed compared to the last two years. 
We expect uh, yung mobility ng tao mas uh, malawak. Maraming uh, pasahero, maraming vehicle ang uh, magta-travel along the road uh, dito sa weekend na ito, sa seven-day period. So, uh, I cannot exactly tell kung volume of vehicles, but I think it would be very big uh, compared to the last two years. From October 27 to November 4, Land Transportation Office will be on heightened alert status. This to ensure that all of their law enforcement teams will maintain peace and order for passengers and motorists. Lahat po ng mga tao namin that are involved in these operations, hindi na po yan allowed na mag day uh, off no? or uh, mag leave sa kanilang mga post. So, Ganun po uh, seryoso yung ating tanggap. Ano? Earlier today, LTO conducted a road safety and defensive driving seminar to public utility bus drivers and conductors. This aims to promote its campaign to ensure that drivers are not influenced with alcohol and illegal drugs. Meanwhile, Philippine Coast Guard also announces that starting today, the agency is also on heightened alert status up until November 3. PCG Commandant Vice Admiral Artemio Abu said they have already deployed maritime safety inspectors in port terminals. Maritime patrol teams are also on critical vicinity areas. And Deployable Rescue Group or DRGs are on standby for possible search and rescue operations during maritime incidents and emergencies. William, the PCG said among the priority areas this long weekend will be the regions of Visayas as it is expected that most tourists will go there. That is our latest live here in Quezon City. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you. JP Nunez reporting live from Quezon City. The Department of Education or DepEd is now finalizing is now finalizing the parameters of um, on the exemption of schools to conduct full blast of face-to-face -face classes. Janice Inhente will tell us why. One week left before the full blast of five-day in-person classes for all public schools nationwide, schools are now gearing up on its implementation in November 2. Toro Hills Elementary School in Quezon City will continue its 100% in-person classes despite challenges including lack of classrooms. Hindi namin nasusunod talaga no, yung ating sinatawag na physical distancing kasi may mga classrooms na medyo masikip to accommodate children na 40 to 45 sa bawat classrooms. So we have agreed, the 129 teachers of Toro Hills LM have agreed na mas gusto talaga namin gawin ng uh, 100 face-to-face -face ito. We are looking into uh, the welfare of children. Aside from Toro Hills Elementary School, Ignacio Villamor Senior High School in Manila is ready for the transition of full blast physical classes by November 2. Jonathan Mananes admittedly said that they can't hide the fact that physical distancing cannot be followed during the full implementation due to lack of classroom and increasing number of enrollees. Eh, hindi natin maiwasan. Uh, sa, dahil sa kabila nito na gusto na talagang maimplementa ma ang full blast face-to-face -face classes, ang nakatatakot eh hindi natin maiwasan na mga mag-aaral talagang lumapit sa isa't isa at uh, liwas sa uh, inaasahan nating physical distancing. O, pero ganun pa man, ginagawa pa rin natin na sa kanilang pagpasok sa paaralan, meron tayong temperature check. We have the hand washing, the consistent pagpapaalala sa mga bata na dapat ay sinusuot ang kanilang mga face mask. Earlier, Vice President and Education Secretary Sara Duterte said that they will release a memorandum order which will be used as a parameter on the exemption of schools for full blast of face-to-face -face classes and will continue on blended learning. According to DepEd spokesperson attorney Michael Powa, they are now finalizing the said memo and will be released once finalized. Janice and Hente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God.
In other news, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BFAR, and fish canneries have signed a memorandum of agreement to ensure sufficient supply of sardines. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. From November 15 to February 5, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources will implement a three-month closed fishing season for sardines, herring, and mackerels. This would allow the fish species to reproduce. In order to sustain and increase the supply of sardines, BFAR and several fish canneries signed a memorandum of agreement to tap fishermen in municipalities where the said fish species are abundant. This would aid in supplying 72 million kilos of fish needed by manufacturers of canned sardines. The MOA would also provide training and transportation assistance to fishermen. Meron ho tayong intervention doon sa pag, sa pamamagitan ho ng pagbibigay din ng mga cooler chest freezers, uh, coolers na kung saan yun ang dapat na paglalagyan nila ng kanilang mga uh, sardinas para o compliance sa food safety requirement. Uh, magbibigay din ho tayo ng ice making machines uh, para ho uh, uh, ma ma mabigyan ng, 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 ng yelo na napaka-importante po sa pagpapreserva ng quality ng ating uh, uh, isda. Fish canneries also hope this would prevent the further price increase of canned sardines. The manufacturers explained the weakening of peso contributed to the increase in the production cost of canned sardines, which led to the proposal to increase prices by three pesos. We are hoping that we can try to uh, uh, do our best. Okay. Of course, this uh, project will mean that there will be additional fish, hopefully during the close season. This will reduce uh, the overhead when canneries have to close down for three months. That will help a lot. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. stressed the need for a system similar to the public-private partnership style to support small businesses. Nel Maribohok tells us why. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said that while the past few years have been difficult for everyone, it is time for the people to return to their normal lives as the COVID-19 pandemic is now fading away. The pandemic is fading away, we are learning to manage it, and now it is time for us to all go back to work, to all go back to our normal lives. In connection with this, President Marcos Jr. raised the need to support the startups and micro, small and medium enterprises in growing their businesses by adopting the system of public-private partnership or PPP. The President made the suggestion during a situation briefing by the Department of Trade and Industries Western Visayas Regional Office on the sidelines of the President's trip in Bacolod City. PBBM said the Department of Trade and Industry should come up with a system that will connect them with private financiers and investors to help them sustain and grow their business. He added that a system should be put in place to establish a platform that will connect all MSMEs to all information and private companies and entities that would help them enhance their business. Sergio Ortiz Luis, President of the Employers Confederation of the Philippines or ECOP, has agreed to the idea of President Marcos Jr. At this point of time, talaga lahat ang kakailangan niya para makatulong, lalo na sa maliliit natin, eh talagang gamitin natin lahat ang available style, ano, ano. Eh yung PPP is one of them na medyo po pwedeng magamit. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. For the news abroad, former United Kingdom Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced his withdrawal from running as Prime Minister. It has left Rishi Sunak, a former British Chancellor, and Penny Mordaunt, a cabinet minister, in the running. From London, United Kingdom, Giona Privado will give us the details live. Giona? 
Yes, Elsie, former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson pulled out from the Conservative Party race, leaving former Chancellor Rishi Sunak and Cabinet Minister Penny Mordaunt to remain in the running for UK's Prime Minister. The former Prime Minister said that he had a very good chance to succeed. However, he later stated that governing without a united party in the parliament would simply not be effective. The contest began among the candidates after Liz Truss, the former Prime Minister, announced her resignation last Thursday, 20th of October. The public has declared that backers had put Mr Sunak on 180 and Ms Mordaunt on 26. Mr Johnson had 54, though claiming to have had 102. Not all 357 members of the parliament in the Conservative Party or MP backers have publicly declared their support to the three candidates. Mr Sunak could become Prime Minister by Monday and definitely be the new PM by the end of this week. Meanwhile, Boris Johnson expressed his committed support to whoever succeeds after revealing that he has a lot to offer but further said this is simply not the right time. The nomination is only open until 2 p.m. UK time today. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Juliana Privado, reporting live from London, United Kingdom. A Russian Sukhoi jet has fatally landed into a residential building in the southern city of Irkutsk in Siberia on Sunday. Ruth Bahe will tell us the details live. Roof? LC the Sukhoi SU-30 fighter jet, which was on a test flight on Sunday, crashed into a residential building in Irkut, Siberia, killing both pilots, but no residents were hurt, according to regional governor Igor Kovzev. This is the second fatal incident in six days involving Russian Sukhoi warplanes. Last Monday, at least 15 people were killed when Sukhoi SU-34 jet crashed into an apartment block in Yeysk, Russia, near Ukraine. According to Russia's State Investigative Committee, a, cl a criminal investigation has been opened in viol into violations of air safety rules. Kovzev said families whose homes were knocked down by the crash were compensated financially and given temporary sh shelter. Well, 150 homes in the locality were affected without electricity, and work has begun to restore power. Elsie? Thank you, Ruth Bahe, for that live report. A research study has discovered that the main symptoms of the coronavirus may be changing. Mavian Dog will tell us why, live. Yes, Maeve? LC Daily reports by users on the Zoe COVID study app in the United Kingdom identified the latest and most prominent symptoms of COVID in recent weeks, which were found to differ depending on a person's vaccination status. The study is a joint effort by researchers from Massachusetts General Hospital, the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, King's College London, and the Stanford University School of Medicine. They revealed the top COVID symptoms among participants. For those fully vaccinated, symptoms included sore throat, runny nose, blocked nose, persistent cough, and headache. Symptoms that were frequently reported at the start of the pandemic, such as loss of smell, fever, and shortness of breath, were all found to be less common today. Those who are partially vaccinated have reported sneezing and a runny nose, which were not previously thought to be a symptom of COVID. For those who have not been vaccinated, the symptoms are more similar to those during the onset of the pandemic. While other frequently reported symptoms like chills, COVID toes or fingers, and stomach aches have become less prevalent. Elsie? Thank you, Mavian Dog, for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. Our Kasang Bahai, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the global prayer for humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day. 
to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God from the book of Psalms, chapter 145, verse 16. It says, Thou openest thine hand and satisfieth the desire of every living thing. Reasons Behind the News, October 24, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. We serve the people. We give glory to God.